Well, well, well. That was a bit of a, that was a bit of a classic, wasn't it? Just watched Uruguay against Namibia here at the stadium in Lyon. And I had my eye on this fixture before the World Cup, thinking that's got real potential, that one. Two of the so-called minnows going head to head towards the end of the pool stage. Namibia's last game tonight, Uruguay's penultimate match. And it, it could have the feel of a bit of a final for the two of them. As it is, Uruguay performed above expectations against France and um, to a lesser extent against Italy. So I think they would have been coming into this game expecting to win. But um, that was loads of fun. So we are. Let's talk about it. I'm Tim. This is Egg Chasers. If you appreciate the content on the channel, then please do hit subscribe. Um, if you haven't already, give the video a thumbs up and um, leave your comments as well. So I'm on a seven week journey. Um, hey, I'm on a seven week journey across France. And um, today's, a, hello, where are you from? Uh, France. France, uh, right. what, what's, what's this team? Lille sur Sorg. I'm from Lille sur Sorg. Allez Lille, Besseikens, Nick Le Suc. Le Suc n'est pas mort, oui, oui. Anglais, anglais? No, French. French. No, no, you speak English? Yes, oh, okay. Bonito. What are people saying in France about when Antoine Dupont will be back? Uh, very big ambiance. W with, a, with a mask? The mask? Yes, thank you for, for, uh, for, <laughs> for this mask. J'adore Paloma. It's okay. Oui, It's oui, okay. Oui. That's okay. Moi, j'aime Marine Schneider, oh, no, qui no, est la plus belle femme de, de, de France. Pardon. Yeah. Oui, oui. No, it's fine. It's fine. Good man. The, the, uh, what is this uh, chain? Uh, egg chasers. Do you know? Yes. You, YouTube. Yes. Yes. YouTube. Go yeah. find it. You'll be on there. Good man. Good man. Uh, what was I saying? Yes. So um, I'm on a seven-week journey across France. Uh, today's my birthday. And uh, so it's one of those days where you kind of having your family around would be kind of nice. But this has been awesome. This has been absolutely brilliant. And uh, I'm kind of buzzing off of rugby from that one. Just a really, really fun game. So if that was two of the big teams that had played, if you just changed the jerseys and that had been Ireland and South Africa, let's say, we would have been talking about that one as a bit of a World Cup classic. It was, uh, it was loads of fun. I mean, I admit, admittedly, at times you could tell it wasn't quite the top level. But I think part of that was the fact that both of these teams were determined to take their opportunity on the big stage and just have a bit of fun. Uruguay, probably guilty of playing a little bit too much from too deep. But I've, understandably, they're, they're like, we're on the world stage. We've got a packed out stadium, 50,000 people. That's just brilliant. That's the first thing I want to say. It doesn't matter who is playing in these World Cup games. And on the video earlier in the channel, if you haven't seen it, go and have a look. It demonstrated that there are people from all over that have come to these games. But the, the French public and, and, the, and the people that have travelled here to France have got behind this World Cup totally. So 50,000 people in there to watch Namibia v Uruguay. Just think how amazing that would be. A load of those players are semi-professional, playing lower leagues. That would have been really, really special, as all the games this World Cup have been. And so I think both teams were like, right, we're here. We've got an opportunity. Let's show what we're capable of. And in terms of Uruguay's attack, how much fun are they to watch? They have now provided two of my favourite moments in the Rugby World Cup. Number one was when their, their captain, um, Andres Villaseca, following their performance against France, which surprised many with how good it was. And he went into the press conference and said, um, oh, you're all here now then. You're all here now. Where were you beforehand? Um, there was only two of you here earlier. That was an amazing moment. And Santiago Arata, what a boy. That try to score Uruguay's first ever bonus point in a Rugby World Cup game. Fulfilling the promise that he showed. I mean, on this channel, I've been talking up Santiago Arata as a lot of people have coming into the World Cup. It's brilliant when the real stars of any team, but I think especially when it's a team that you don't get to see as much, puts in a statement performance on the world stage and Santiago Arata's try was absolutely awesome. Uh, that Mouton fellow, the, the right winger for Namibia, uh, yeah, he had a, a pretty stellar game as well and got things underway with a, an interception with one of the very first plays. And they, Namibia were 14-0 ahead and you were going, well, this isn't going along with the script. Uruguay used their power game. And what's his name? German Kessler, the hooker, who, right, if I said the name German Kessler, right, imagine in your head, what someone called German Kessler looks like, you would, you would picture the way German Kessler looks. The mullet-tash combo. 
is absolutely perfect. Uh, but the power game for Uruguay came to the fore and that ground Namibia down slowly and then the indiscipline started to come when they got tired. Three yellow cards in all, well, two yellow and a red card, wasn't it, for uh, Namibia. And uh, yeah, the bunker got a lot of, bit, got a work, a lot of work tonight. Um, one of the comments I saw in some WhatsApp groups that were bubbling away with friends of mine while that game was going on is that they, the one issue with the bunker is they prefer a referee to make the decision in a lot of cases. Because, you know, Matthew Reynal's an experienced ref. I actually thought he did quite well tonight. Um, a very experienced ref. He could make that call. He probably knows what a red card is, what a yellow card is. And, and also, you don't hear the thought process and the explanation. So, yeah, I, I, it's, it's, a, it's a juggling act, isn't it? Because on the one hand, you're speeding the game up. On the other hand, you don't totally know what's going on. So, um, yeah, what else to say? Yeah, it was 20 points to 12 at half time. Went up to 23-12. So... They were 14 points down, pulled it back, then then 11 points down, pulled it back and went ahead with some really good... I mean, Arata, Amaya, Kessler. Um, oh, yeah, what one observation on Uruguay. That's the third game in a row we've seen them in their yellow change kit. And, of course, four out of the five teams in Pool A play in blue and the other one plays in black. Uruguay play against uh, New Zealand here next week. Another game I'll be at, and hopefully we get to see that beautiful sky blue Uruguayan jersey uh, next week. But just generally loads of fun. Namibia played their part. Um, did they get a bonus point out of that one in the end? I've, I've forgotten the final score. No, I don't think they did, did they? Anyway, they've played their part. They, they did their bit. I think Uruguay, you can, we can look back on and say they are one of the real success stories of this Rugby World Cup. They've got another game to go uh, against New Zealand and they'll go out swinging, but they'll thoroughly and understandably enjoy that one now. It's, I know they beat uh, Fiji, wasn't it, at the last World Cup, but this is the most points they've ever scored at a Rugby World Cup. They've got the five now, full five points for their win against Namibia and they're growing. And I guess the questions start being asked and I might go in actually and w when we get to interview some of the, when I get to interview some of the players in a bit, I might actually... Um, go ahead and ask these players, what is it? No, no, it's fine, you can walk through, it's fine. Oh, thank you, cheers, good man. Um, just lots of people being very politely not walking through here. I don't mind, I kind of like it. Um, but I guess the question starts to, starts to arrive. What do you do to help these lower ranked emerging teams step up another level? And I think it, I've mentioned it in a previous video, I think it would be really, really lovely if the journey didn't end tonight for Namibia and if the journey didn't end next Thursday, is it for Uruguay? And there was some kind of continuation of the competition after the pool stages for the teams that finish in, or maybe third and fourth, or maybe third, fourth and fifth. You could have other competitions that kind of waterfall down in the way that the sevens tournaments do in the sevens series. You end up with, at the sevens series, uh, is it position one down to 12 or is it one down to 20? I forget how many teams play in the in the seven series but I think it must be possible to do something like that and I hope World Rugby are looking at it because the opportunities to play in competitive games when it really matters is, is what these teams need I was I was looking and Uruguay have only played one game against another top opposition since the last World Cup and that was Italy the team that they also played last time out so that, these opportunities are so rare and so important uh, in order to get better. And also the, the great thing about that waterfall type tournament is Uruguay, Namibia, Romania, um, Tonga, Samoa, all these other teams that never get to taste knockout rugby or rarely, I should say, get to taste knockout rugby, actually have a little taste of knockout rugby. Bearing in mind they've then got to go and qualify for World Cups. It would just be invaluable experience. And we've had 50,000 people turn up at a stadium to watch a pool game. That is of no consequence to the quarterfinals. And it, with that being the case, People will turn out and watch these games, like midweek matches. We could have a Wednesday night tournament while the quarterfinals are at the weekends, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday night, or Tuesday, thir Wednesday, Thursday night. You could have a, a kind of a, a concurrent competition, which gives these teams another opportunity. And who doesn't want to see more of Santiago Arata? I certainly do. And that's who I'm going to go and try and have a chat with. So um, hit subscribe on the channel to make sure you catch all the videos. I will see you on the next one. All right, I'm going to have to come in and turn it off now. Here we go. Done.